pray for uh, Miss Cindy's aunt. Miss Cindy's family has been through an awful lot. Brother Doug. Pray for me and my family. Yes. I've been sick all this week, brother. <laughs> was a head cold. I knew it, yes. I was real sick this morning. Uh, thank God I'm doing better. I'm here tonight. Praise God. Pray for Brother Doug. Amen. You want to see commitment, look at these five that the Lord used to keep the doors open when it looked pretty dim. Amen. Amen. I talked to that guy that was here last night, Brother Buck. Y'all remember Brother Buck he come last night? He used to walk many miles to get to church. And some people won't walk a foot. Amen. Yeah, amen. There's been time, I mean, there's, in, but he was willing to walk. Y'all pray for Brother Buck tonight, all right? Amen. Is anybody else? You can bring your petition to the Lord, believe he'll answer it, trust him. If not, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Pray for the ones that may be traveling tonight. I think there's some supposed to still on their way. Josh, he's not here yet. He's on his way. He's at work. So let's go and pray for Josh. Yes. He'll be coming, so y'all pray that he's safe. Pray for Brother Josh. I tell you what, I got broken last night just watching him get praying over that offering, how the Lord saved him. Seeing Miss Tiny back here. She got a smile on her face. Look at there. Let's go ahead and pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to come to you tonight, Lord. To, Lord, we do thank you for all that you do, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're making the impossible possible, Lord. You're, Lord, you, we were at a Red Sea experience, Lord, and you parted that thing. Lord, I thank you for it. Father, I thank you for all that's here tonight. Lord, despite the weather. Lord, despite circumstance. Lord, despite hindrances. Father, I pray for every person here tonight that you'll bless each one in a special way. And Lord, I pray, Lord, as, the, as your spirit, Lord, as the Holy Ghost has been moving this week, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you not pull him back, Father, that you just let him continue to deal with people and work on the hearts, Father. Lord, I don't just want the steeple lit, Lord. I want this church, Lord, to continue to be lit. That, Lord, she can be a shining light, Lord, for this, not only this community, Lord, but the surrounding communities, Lord, and a light into the world, Father. Tonight, Lord, I pray that as you look upon her, Lord, from heaven, that you smile, Lord. You say, praise be, that's my people. Father, I do ask, Lord, that your anointing be upon this service tonight, Lord, that everything we do, Lord, bring glory and honor to you, Father, for it's not my will, but it's thy will. Father, it ain't thus saith the, the board, but thus saith the Lord. And tonight, Lord, I pray, Lord, that everything will be according to thy will. Father, for the one that's hurting, Father, here and out there. Lord, for the one that's struggling, Lord, with some addiction, some whatever it is, Father, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, that you convict, convict them, Father, and show them, Father, that all the programs in the world cannot bring what you can bring to them, Father. Lord, programs are good and, and everything, Lord, but they don't last. But, Lord, when they meet you, Lord, like that woman at the well, Father, you gave her what she needed. <laughs> Father, I pray for that one, Lord, that's struggling, that you give them tonight what they need. Father, may I be the pastor that you have me to be, Father. Is, Lord, I sense that you're taking this church, Father. You're, you are fixing to take her to places unknown. And we're going to trust you, Father. Lord... I pray that you, Lord, just give me the strength, Father, and give me the, Lord, give me what I need to lead these people, Lord, as we follow you. Father, we're going to thank you for all that you do, for it's in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Yep. Go ahead, brother. This is my story. This is my song.
song this afternoon. I came in the church and uh, we were doing some things and I, I thought about the blessed assurance. The blessed assurance of what God has done in our lives. Amen. Amen. All right. I, I'm going to tell you. I told you from the very beginning I'd be honest with you. Y'all be seated for just a moment. Uh, it's Friday night and you're at church. Let your face know it. Y'all look like you lost your best friend. I'm telling you, we, we ought to be excited about Jesus Christ and what he's done. As Brother Brandon said, our bodies may be physically tired, but God's making some preparation for some things that's going to go on. So we're getting strengthened. And when you, when you go to the gym and you begin to work out, you're, you begin to build some muscle and you begin to get stronger. Yes, there's a little soreness that comes along with that. Hello? But, but I want you to know something tonight. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior in the rain, in the mud, in the slop, in the sunshine, in the cold, in the wind, all the day long. All the day long. 
We want the world to know, church. We want the world to know blessed assurance. We want the people to know that we come in contact with blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Can we stand and sing that song again? Let's sing that chorus again. This is my story. This is my song.
Amen. Aren't you glad he loves you? Give the Lord some praise in the house. Amen. You may be seated. And uh, um, back last February, we were doing a revival up in uh, a little community up in Aberdeen, Louisiana, uh, Aberdeen, Arkansas. Uh, I've been in Louisiana so long now, I'm calling everything Louisiana. Uh, <laughs> but... But this song, God began to uh, to give us this. We would, had gone to her, hear a friend of ours uh, was preaching, and and as he was preaching, he said these words. As he walked down the aisle, he said, "Would somebody pray for me?" I ask you the question tonight. Don't you love it when somebody says, "Hey, I've been praying for you." There's nothing like that. Whenever we hear those words, hey, I've been praying for you. It is an honor and a privilege to pray for somebody. I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you. Listen to the message of this song. Would somebody pray?
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That. You know, we can have a revival here tonight. It means came for revival. Amen. It means wants a touch from God tonight. Thank you, Lord. It means carrying a burden. I wish somebody was praying. Come on now. So if we just look around and say, I'm praying for you. You know, we, we don't have to wait to the invitation to go to the altar. Did y'all know that? Mm. I know it's not typically, you know, the way to do it in the Baptist church, but the altars are open. Yeah, are. Amen. <laughs> the altars are open. Yeah. So be sensitive yes. to what God's showing you, what God's telling you. If he's telling you to grab somebody and say, hey, I need somebody to pray for me. We need to come together on this situation. We need to be lifting each other up. The burden, it gets heavy. And a load you cannot bear. You carry so long it seems that no one cares but now in this moment I'm begging those verses I got to share a little bit about those verses I, I feel like it's for somebody a friend of ours was going through a, and continues going through a struggle in their life a marriage issue and she'll She'll text me and we'll pray together and we'll, we'll let God be God. But I, but I remember when the verses came, how it was so fast. Sister Christie, it was just like, they were just like a, a scroll pulled down and there they were. Because I had seen the look upon her face personally the hurt and what it was doing to her physically. The Bible says that we're to bear one another's burdens and when you bear something, that, that means you help get along with it. You begin to, to take it as if it's yours almost. And when we pray, we ought to pray believing. Amen. Pray believing what God's going to do. Would somebody please Praise. Amen. 
I'm going to invite uh, uh, a friend of mine that uh, I, we got the time to fellowship today. And uh, Sister Linda, would you make your way up here? She's got a special and that she's going to share with you. And uh, uh, she's, she's bringing out the old song, Sister Christy. I'm telling you right now. She said, you know this song? And I'm like, I know of it, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so... Looks like a rainbow back there. I'm an artist. What do you expect? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. There you go. Here's your microphone. Okay. So you can pull it out. And then you don't have to talk so they can hear you because you're on the camera. Okay. <laughs> you know, I will explain in a minute why this song's important and what he's talking about when I came and talked to him today. And like I said, there's going to be a lot of surprises here. And hopefully that, and hopefully that by the time that I get through with my testimony, so to speak, it'll make a difference. Amen. Because I was so shocked <laughs> with myself. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to sing this song. Now this is he didn't he did not. We did not practice this song. I just sprung this on him. That's all right. So anyway, I'm going to try to sing the words. <clears throat> the devil's after me, as usual. Uh, but anyway, he's going away. It, it, his eye is on the sparrow. How many remember that song from a long time ago? We never hardly hear that song anymore. And I just, and I wanted to sing, uh, at least have him sing something. Or I asked him to sing it, but he said it had been a long time. So anyway, I'll I'm going to try. Y'all sing with me if y'all know the song. And then I'm going to explain why this song meant something to me. Okay? Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is me. Oh, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on. I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. Oh, I sing because I'm free. Watches me. Let, let not let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I hear, and resting on His goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see, oh, his eye is on the sparrow, <laughs> and I know he watches me. Oh, Sparrow, 
for I know he watches me. Why I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, y'all get tempted sometimes? Whenever clouds arise, when songs give all place to sighing, when hope within me dies, that ever happened to y'all? I draw the closer to him. From cares he sets me free. Oh, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he cares for me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know, yes, I know, he cares for me. Y'all sing. I sing because I'm happy. one more time I sing because I'm happy I sing because I'm free for his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me know that he's watching over you amen i'm going to tell you why i did this i'll try to make it brief now my class knows me <laughs> we're always like <laughs> Truly saved. I raised my hand last night. I sat by her, Ladonna. Happy little thing. Well, she's just so happy. <laughs> she's gonna be baptized Sunday. And then I got to thinking because. A couple weeks ago, I was sitting at the piano there at Harmony Baptist Church. And Pastor Gabe asked a question. Because I've, I've never been challenged with this before. He said, how many of you know that you're saved? And would anybody be willing to give their testimony so the rest of us can hear it? Well, it's kind of this Paul for a little bit. And then different ones started speaking up. I didn't say anything. Because after thinking about it, well, now I do two Bible study classes. I do a Sunday school class. I sing in a choir. I play the piano. Okay, God, didn't I do good? <laughs> I endured <laughs> with some of the people in my class. <laughs> But that didn't satisfy me, that answer. But because I got to thinking about it. I even talked to, said something to Judy about it. 
And she could remember the exact time, date and time. And so I, I got to thinking, and, and I'm fixing to talk about him in just a second. I'll talk to your face. <laughs> Because I got to thinking about my life, and I got to going back over my life and think, well, okay, when did this really happen to me? Because I was content where I was. I mean, you know, I've gone through a lot of storms like everybody else. And I've taught the very thing that now I've been questioning. Anybody been there? I know where I'm coming from. And anyway, so I came up here to the altar last night. And I was, it's like I'm having a surreal experience. I'm talking, but I, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm talking to myself. And then, but I left, I had to leave early. And I had to apologize to him because, you know, my husband has Alzheimer's. And so I couldn't stay out that late. And I didn't want them to think that I just left because of something he said. <laughs> <laughs> I got home I couldn't even read my Bible really all I could do was think about that booming, looming question about I've been saying these things I've been doing these things and yet something triggered inside of me that it wasn't satisfactory so and I knew that they were going to have a Bible study here this morning at 9 o'clock. You know what my prayer was last night before I went to sleep? I slept really, really well. got up this morning. I said, I hope that the pastor doesn't have anybody because I really need to talk to him about something. Well, I came in here and I sat here about 5, 10 minutes thinking, uh-oh. <laughs> Nobody's here. I said, well, that's a good thing, isn't it? That's what you wanted, wasn't it, Linda? That's what you wanted. And then he walks in. And then, so, he remembered me from last night. Yep. And uh, so, I said, uh, I'm glad you're here. I'd like to talk to you by myself. And you know what he told me? What's his name, Matt? What? Brother, Mac. Brother Mac, who lives in what, Jackson, Mississippi? Yep. Called him a few days ago and told him that a, a lady was going to come and needed, can't, uh, needed to talk to the pastor, him, alone. That's kind of freaky, isn't it? <laughs> and I looked at him like, ooh, ooh, okay. And so before I even said what I was on my heart, he said, I know, what you're, I know what's wrong with you. And I said, uh-oh. <laughs> And he pinpointed some things in my life that I wasn't really aware of. Now, we also talked about the devil and the demons. Okay, class, you remember? We did the study on them. And I warned y'all about what's going to happen. And it happened. <laughs> he stalks you, comes after you with an onslaught. And I found out some things about him, the devil. That we do have victory over him. Amen. We do have authority. Yes. Right. And we do have the power that's, that's been given to us. But how many of us really use it? How much, how much has it really been taught in most Baptist churches anyway? It's kind of glossed over because I've heard some people say, Well, I'm going to leave him alone. And he'll leave me alone. Well, that ain't so. No. You're already in bondage to that. What I'm basically saying is that sometimes we feel so insignificant in our walk through this life. Especially if we're, we've got so many things coming against us and we don't know where to turn. A lot of times we're afraid to tell somebody else what will they think of us. Oh, well, my cover's blown. You know, that kind of stuff. So fear holds a lot of people back. Because they don't even know what what's going to come out of their mouth. And they're afraid once it's out there, 
Then what? But you have to lay that down. And the reason for that, now I'm, I'm going to be going to my church Sunday telling them the same thing that I'm telling. I call them up. I wouldn't tell my class, you know, what was going on. I said, you got, I'm going to shock y'all. <laughs> and look at that look on their faces. <laughs> Yeah, and I thought of two instances that could have, I thought, were maybe legitimate. But you know, when it got right down to it, I started reading in the Word. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, which is like a penny, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered, or like thereof. <laughs> Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Do you know how much God loves us? I've taught this, and I believe it. But you know what? It's 14 inches between your brain and your heart. And I've taught it. And I believe it. But somehow it got rewired someplace else. Went, pew, maybe like that. Or, pew, went that way. Because, and I would teach this class and believe everything I was saying, but then it still, something was not right with me. I didn't know what it was. That's what I came over here today to find out. Because there's been too many questions now for the last couple of weeks that I've had to Think about this. I'm 71. It's about time I start thinking about it. But you know what? God does not waste not one thing that happens to us. Because I told him this morning, I said, there's always that pull toward him, to him. And he's going to cover you in that journey to him, however long it takes. And I, I personally believe that God is not going to take us out of this world until... We complete what he wants us to do. Those that who are following after Christ, wanting him, desiring him, want to love him with all their heart. My journey, see, is still in progress. But now I have a different perspective. I mean, it's more clear. I mean, now I'm going to have to have cataracts removed off my eyes anyway, so I thought, well, okay, I blame that. <laughs> cataracts. <laughs> That's no excuse. I was, I was missing some things. I would see it and read it, but it wasn't registering. And I'd pray about it and think about it. And, well, God, you know, I mean, this is what you say. And I was passionate. Tell, ask my class. I would be passionate about some things I'd say because I truly did believe it. But it wasn't. It's was believism without the believism. Okay. That didn't make any sense. Let me try again. <laughs> I believed because, first of all, it's tradition. If you've been raised in a church, you go on somebody else's coattail, so to speak. And I came from a Christian family, and I knew the rudiments of the world and what you're supposed to say and what you're supposed to do. And you, so you go on that kind of steam for quite a while, and then God yanks that out from under you. Okay, now what? <laughs> yeah, pacifier. This morning, I was thinking, you know, how privileged we really are that God loves us this much, that he's willing to wait on us for maybe a long time to come to him. Now, we don't know when we're going to die. We just don't know that. But as long as we have life, there's breath. With his breath, there's still life. And he still wants to use us. And what comforted me was Moses in the, in the desert for 40 years. <laughs> that comforted me <laughs> for some reason. Because what he was doing, he's preparing Moses 
for the journey ahead. He's got to be bringing all these people out into the desert. Had he been still in Pharaoh's court, he would have known the first thing about being in the desert. If they had, seen, if they had TV, he'd been seen on TV. But real life, realistically, he had to be prepared. So everything that I'm comforted in knowing this, everything that has happened to me all the way up to this point, up until this morning, God used. He knew this was going to happen. Before millions and millions and millions and eons ago, when he thought about Linda Stuckey, he was thinking he knew this day was going to happen. I can finally now say, with all clarity, the, the word that he used. I know that I know because I, I just kind of knew a little. I mean, I, he said three I knows. I know that I know that I know, and I could probably do one. <laughs> the other two, I had to wait until today. And it's different. He told, he, you know, he told me, he dared to say this to me, I could probably be a preacher. <laughs> and I said, oh no, my husband told me. <laughs> That's enough preaching going on with just him. But you know, we never know what God has earmarked us for. What, what he's got for us in store for us if we just hang in there. I just didn't, I just didn't get it. I mean, everybody else was getting it. You know, and he asked me a question. And I thought about this when I came home. He said to me, he said, do you believe that a, a person that's preaching or that's teaching the word of God, even though they might not be saved, that somebody else could get saved? I said, yeah, I do believe that. And then he said something about singing. Somebody that can sing beautifully, you know, and, they, and a person responded to that, that song, and they can give their heart to the Lord. Can they be saved? And I said, yeah, they can be saved. And he looked me square in the eyes, like, what about you? <laughs> okay, here we go again. So I had to say and up until this morning, and then I said, I want to settle this. I really want to settle this. I'm sick of this. I want to have my day in court. <laughs> I want my name in that land's book of life. It's there, and they devil ain't taking it out. Now I can't wait to see what he's going to do with me now. He's got me this far. He's going to take me all the way because he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, and I will complete you in your journey. Amen. Amen. And now I'm anxious to see what he's going to do since I, my eyes are like wide open now. <laughs> Look out, class. Look out, class. <laughs> because I am going to go and stand before my church. You know, and I thought about, you know what, this is going to be like a, going to blow people away because, I mean, because I've considered I've always been saved. And then I go, and then these people can be looking at me like, well, was she teaching us some false stuff or something like that? <laughs> no, I, at least the things I was teaching was out of the Bible. I go, Whew. at least about that. And I thought it was going to have to take a lot of guts to get up here. But you know, this has been the easiest thing to get up here and tell my class. I even called Brother Gabe and told him, alerted him, warned him that what's about to happen Sunday. <laughs> and so he, anyway, he said he has known, he, he told me about somebody he knows personally that was a preacher that got saved. And you're telling me somebody that you knew. Like a preacher's wife. So, I mean, really. So, you know, you kind of, you can be self-deceived and deceived by the devil. But now that I know that I know that I know that I know, I got ADDH spiritually. Amen. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> Amen. So this morning, 
you know, I was really wanting to shout this from the rooftop. And uh, so Brother Brandon, when I was talking to him, he said, don't tell nobody. Let her tell it tonight. Let her tell it tonight. And, uh, and so, you know, God will save anybody, anytime, any place when they're under conviction. Amen. 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 She got to the place and realized what she was missing. And I love what you said. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to use that. Went to, ch went to church because of tradition. Almost the wording would be saved because it's a tradition. You can't be saved by a tradition. The only thing you can be saved by is the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it right there, church. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Are you happy? Come on now. Are you happy in the Lord? Amen. Amen. I'm happy in the Lord. Uh, uh, man, God is just so good. And uh, ooh, I'm just thinking about this song. I played this song a little bit earlier. And uh, have you got a special tonight? Well, we're going to sing this song, and uh, he broke the chains, amen? Aren't you glad that he's a chain breaker? Brother Dub, you going to pick the guitar with me on this song? Wait, uh, all right, you want to do that right now? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you if you want to play the Hey, man, I, I like that sort of praise, too. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. One night, Paul and Silas, they were thrown into jail. Bound in chains and darkness, they were deep within their cells. Good at 
breaking shame. said he came to set the captives free. He'll break your chain. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 So, uh, are you going to sing tonight? Well, come on in this. Oh, come on now. Amen. Amen. We can close shop tonight. It be revived. It ain't often you have a revival meeting and you see church members get saved. I'm not serious. Amen. We're all set to go. Those that y'all did that knew Miss Linda before. Y'all fixing to really get to know her. I pray that people out there will look at themselves. I pray that Miss Linda, you're going to reach a lot more people. Yes, yes, that's right. Our Bible study goes from six o'clock to one in the morning. Now we're going to be there for two days. <laughs> and now you got a saved person teaching you, sister. Amen. <laughs> Let me. You listen to the words of this song. How many believe that Jesus is with you? Huh? I'm excited. I'm ready to go out there. And we gotta, I'm ready to get the visitation, Brother Vernon. I'm ready to get the door knocking, huh? Come on. Let people know that Jesus is with them.
of the most evangelical Baptist church in the state. We had seen so many people come to know the Lord that we had eventually we had ended up going to two services. 700 and something people saved in a year's time. But before all of that, my mom, she came to know the Lord as a preacher's wife. Isn't that amazing? Every preacher's wife ought to be saved. Every preacher ought to be saved. And when I was 19 years old, God, for the first time, convicted me of my lost, sinful condition. I'd walked the aisle at Vacation Bible School when I was 11 or 12 years old, and I didn't want to go to hell. Nobody would want to go to hell, but that's not enough to be born again. I never knew I was going. Never knew that I deserved it. And at 19 years old, I told God, well, I struggled for a whole week. I struggled for a whole week. Y'all listen close. Somebody, the Lord's pointing. Somebody, somebody's been a church member. And, I, and I'm sharing under the authority of my husband. He knows my testimony. I truly believe women are, are can be wonderful teachers. Wonderful teachers. But but I can never preach or pastor. But I can I can preach be a preacher for Jesus and share my testimony. Okay. And I was I was lost. And I was undone, but I had heard, I knew all the right answers because I heard the right answers all the time. We groom our children. You learn to say the right answers because you hear the right answers. But then the lifestyle and the answers, they don't add up. And I, I, I wrestled with God and I literally knew what it meant when that verse said that it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. I was scared for my very life. I, I played the piano. I went all over Louisiana following my daddy. But I was lost. But when God showed me my lost condition, he knew my heart. And I told him, Lord, I, I, I believe that you, you, I believe everything that you said you were. And that I believe that you're going to do everything that you said you will do. Whenever you ask yourself if I'm not, if I'm not truly born again, and you can go back to and say that you did what the word said. That you knew you were lost. You just like what the scripture explains. There's no other way. There's no other way under heaven by which we must be saved, and that's by the name of Jesus. There's no other name. And if y'all, if one of y'all are here and you're worried about what people think, then that's, the devil knows where your goat's tied. He knows. And he's going to use that to keep you in prison to him and make you feel comfortable and give you them pacifiers. Because he wants you to think you're okay. So he can take you to hell when you die. Exactly right. People have that all wrong. Oh, the devil, he's just making me think I'm lost. No, he wants you to think you're saved. So when you die, 
you're all his. If it's dark where you're standing, and clouds of sin have gathered, oh, there's still some time it's marked to lay it all. Amen. Thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful song. But Brandon, you've been holding out there, buddy. I see how that is. And uh, what a great night. What a great week thus far. I believe, I believe, you know, Brother Brandon and I, we've been talking and Throughout the day, he called me from the second story. He said he was about ready to fly whenever I, I told him about Sister Lahinda. And he said, I think I could just jump off and float right to the ground. And everything would be good. And uh, so I'm, I'm thankful tonight. I'm thankful to all of you. Thank you so much for allowing uh, Penny and I and Stephen to be a part of this move of God. It's not that we're moving God. Not at all. It's just that we got in right where it's at. And, and I believe God's still doing the work. I believe he's, he's working in some lives. I agree with Sister Christy. God's, the Holy Spirit has been knocking on some doors tonight. Uh, it's, it's going out everywhere. It's going out on the Internet. People are, are seeing. Uh, people are hearing the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit is doing the convicting. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles tonight, and again, I pray that you do. Um, Turn to the book of Luke, uh, chapter, uh, we're going to be in chapter 5, and we're going we're gonna to begin, we're going to look at one verse tonight, but we'll, we'll kind of catch up with that, uh, Luke chapter 5 and verse 8, and thank you for that already standing in honor of the reading of God's Word. Uh, I'm thankful for the power that's in the Word of God, that it, it is the ultimate authority. There is nothing in it that you can prove wrong. It's right from cover to cover, uh, and it stood the test of time. I was doing some studying today uh, in uh, Psalms chapter 22, and when you go and you read the account of the crucifixion, it's almost verbatim. Uh, you got to understand that that, that that particular book was wrote a thousand years prior to the crucifixion. Only God. I said only God. Amen. Amen. Verse 8 says in the book of Luke chapter 5, and it says, And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Let's read that one more time. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the day already. I thank you for the services tonight. God, I thank you right now, Lord, for the songs that have been sung, the testimonies that have been given, the praises that have been lifted to you. And Lord, we ask you right now that you would just bless those. 
God, you know our hearts. You know everything about us. And so, Lord, I ask you right now that you would just surround this place with angels. And, God, that right now that uh, you, you would bind Satan in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And any demonic force that would try to come against this service right now, we bind you up in the name of Jesus and say you have no authority here. And so right now we want to hear from you, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Show us the things that are in our life that we uh, continue to seek out, uh, Lord, to draw closer and closer and closer and to get so close that we can't, that, that maybe folks wouldn't tell where you begin and we end and we end and you begin, that we're walking arm in arm. God, we, we don't want to get in front of you. Lord, we want to stay right with you. So, Father, we thank you that you have blazed the path. And right now, God, I pray for the lost ones, Lord. I pray for the lost that are listening to this service via the Internet. God, I pray for the lost that possibly are in this service tonight. God, I pray that their hearts would be broke open wide and fertile ground exposed. God, I pray seeds that uh, would get planted, seeds that have been planted to get watered. And, God, we ask you tonight for the increase. And so, Lord, we thank you right now. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we lift you high as you're so worthy of. And we ask it in the name that we can only come to you in, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. So we find in this passage of Scripture, I toyed today with several passages, and God just led me. He, he nailed me on to this one. And, and so we find at the beginning of this passage uh, in chapter 5 that uh, there's some things that are ha happening. But what I want us to take a look at for just a few moments, is the wording that uh, is, is penned here. It says, when Simon Peter saw it. It has to come to a place in our life where we see it. It has to get to the place. You can look at it for so long, and, uh, you know, we talked about it. Some, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. Um, I can tell you that I'd, I'd hate to know how many days I have spent in a church house. I'd hate to try to count the hours up and the days to say that that qualifies me for anything because it doesn't. It doesn't qualify me for anything whatsoever. But, when, but when, when I see Jesus, something happens. Whenever, whenever I, I fix my eyes upon the Lord and I begin to, to look at him and you say, well, Brother David, can you see the Lord? I see his word. We fellowship together. We walk hand in hand. Amen. It's a personal relationship. So we find in this passage of scripture that Jesus is coming along and all of a sudden he passes by and he sees these boats out there. And so he's got a multitude there. So he begins to push out a little ways. Do you know Jesus was a sound technician? Because when you get on the lake and you begin to talk, you can hear across it. And so he pushes out a little ways, and he begins to, uh, to teach, the Bible says. And as he began to teach from the boat, the people were listening. And after a period of time, he tells old Simon Peter, old rough and gruff Simon Peter. Anybody here rough and gruff? You ask your spouse in the morning if you're rough and gruff. Amen. I, I think you'll get a, a true answer. I know I do. <laughs> and uh, so... Uh, Stephen's rough and gruff, amen, uh, that boy. And, but, you know, old Simon, he's rough and gruff about a lot of things. And as he begins at this point in time, he's listening to the teaching. You've got to understand he's pushed out in the boat with Jesus. And so after Jesus is finished teaching, you've got to understand that now here is Simon Peter, Probably skin brown as it can be from the sun, old salt water that had been fishing in and everything else. Hands probably cut up from the net, just just old, just rough. Uh, and and as he all of a sudden has listened for, we don't know how long that Jesus taught from the boat, but all of a sudden the words begin to penetrate. And they begin to go to the heart. And, he, and he's sitting there. He doesn't have any place else to go. 
How many of you ever been fishing before and you just really didn't want to go and so you're sitting in, in, in the barge, that's me, and, and you're trying to figure out, you know, how, how much longer are we going to be out here and you, you're twisting and you're turning. If you're in an aluminum boat, you better not twist and turn too much. You'll flip that thing. You'll be out in the water. And, uh, and, then, and, and so I, I, I asked Penny, I said, you about ready to go? She said, in a little bit. And a little bit to her is about five hours later. When she goes fishing, it looked like a shrimp boat. There's so many rod and reels put out. Simon Peter, he didn't have... <laughs> you on a mission. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you on a mission. Her idea of fishing is that she catches them and I clean them. That's right. But Simon Peter, he didn't have any place to go. He, didn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't just step out. And he has listened. He might not have wanted to start it at the beginning. Boy, that a, that a preach right there. And a lot of times we don't want to listen at the beginning. But God will get our attention before the end. Amen? And when he gets our attention... There's something that just begins to get a hold. And so as we, we continue on, and all of a sudden Jesus turns to the professional fisherman. And he says, let down your net for a catch. I'm going to step on some toes right now. Y'all say amen. amen. A lot of times when somebody comes along and they... Tell us we need to do this and we need to do that. And we say, you're crazy. I've been doing this for many, many years. You're going to come in here and you're going to tell me what I need to do? Who do you think you are? Yeah. Oh, Simon Peter, he was a fisherman. And all of a sudden, Jesus, somebody just got into his boat and pushed out. Done taught for hours out there. Going to tell me how to fish. Going to tell me where to throw my net down? Going to tell me all of these things? I'm talking to somebody tonight because we need to pay attention. When Jesus starts speaking, we better pay attention because he's not just talking to hear a voice. He's speaking to us intently about something. And all of a sudden, as, as Peter says, nevertheless, Lord, we taught all night, but nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. God speaks to our heart about a lot of things. We've talked about this a lot this week, how to, how, how to go visit somebody. Uh, man, I, I was blown away uh, at uh, the gentleman that came with you last night. Me and him, we sat over here and we fellowshiped for quite a while last night. But God sp spoke and said, go, go get this guy. And there was a reason for it. There's a reason that all of us are here tonight, Amen. without a doubt. And so we find that in, in, this, in this particular passage right here, Simon Peter has been listening, and then all of a sudden Jesus says, let down your net for a catch. How many of us get right to the point, and God's going to use us for a big catch, and then we, we decide to, to mouth up? fuss up, and pack up. Now, I'm going to carry my net and put it back in the closet. I've been, I've been in a lot of different church churches. I've been uh, all over this country from A to Z. I've seen it all. I've seen a lot. But my friend, when God begins to speak, we, we better start hopping. We better, we better start listening because there's a plan that's in order. And my friend, I don't want to miss out on what God's got. Amen. I don't want to miss out. If I wanted to have missed out, I'd have packed up, Brother Brandon. Sunday night we got done. I said, no, Brother Brandon, I don't think I'm, you know, we need to get on home. Jesus said, let down your net for a draw. And 
he let down the net, and when he began to pull it up, the Bible says that the net began to break. And he had to call for help for the others to come put all the fish in the boat. And then so here, here we are at our, at our verse that we're, we're looking at tonight. And it says, when Simon Peter saw it, some of us, it takes a little bit longer for us to see it. Some of us, it takes a, a, a more convincing, if you will. Some of us, it takes a good slap upside the head by, by the Lord. Some of us, it takes a lot of different things, but Simon Peter saw it. And my friend, when you get into the presence of Jesus Christ, when you, when you see it, there's not one thing to do that you really can do. Fall to your knees. Because once you get around Jesus Christ, it says wherever he would go, there would always be a multitude and they would be going with him, following him along, the disciples in a great multitude. And as they would make their way along, there would always be those that were doing exactly what God had talked to them about doing. Then there was those that wasn't. Simon Peter, at this point, he realized he was one of those that had been in the had-not crowd. For years and years, I guess it was the first, must have been Sunday or Sunday night. I shared with you about our business, but for years and years, I knew what God was saying. Years and years of, of doing, yeah, I was out singing. We, we would go and be gone, leave Friday night a lot of times, get back early Monday morning time to shut the bus down and go back to work. And had done sung Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Yeah, it was busy. But a lot of times we can get so busy not fishing where Jesus wants us to fish. We can get so busy just being busy. We can get, we can get busy just being church. And people die and go to hell every day. But Simon Peter said, and when he saw it, and what he saw was the Savior of the world. What he saw was Jesus Christ. What he recognized was who Jesus truly is and who he is right now. Simon Peter, he, the Bible says, and when he saw it, I have to wonder if he just thought his knees began to get weak because he realized the presence of who he was in. who Jesus is. And then he begins to confess. My friend, I want you to know there is nothing that we can go and convince Jesus Christ of. And you say, what are you talking about there? I'm saying when we go to him, we need to be like Simon Peter Oh, Lord, I'm a sinful man. I'm a sinful man. Simon Peter, he realized real quick, and he fell to his knees, and he cried, Depart from me, O Lord, for I'm a sinful man. But did Jesus leave him? Jesus doesn't leave at that point. He says, now I've got something that I can work with because when the heart gets broken open and it gets open wide, there's nothing else to do. The old saying is, is it says, when you get on flat on your back, the only thing you can do is look up. Amen. Sometimes it takes getting to that position as, as Simon Peter, he says, oh, depart from me. And, 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 and he had done got on his knees and he had done got down and he'd got to the place in his life that he realized he needed a savior. He done got into the presence of God. He done got right in the midst of it, had been sitting in the boat with him. Brother Doug, for hours, had been sitting there listening to him teach and teach and teach with authority and with wisdom. And then all of a sudden, he saw it. 
all of a sudden it began to, to sink in who this Jesus is. This man that jumped into my boat and said, let's push out for a little bit. And then all of a sudden he had a, told him to let down his net. And even the fish responded to him. He rewarded him for a catch. We don't know how, what the value of that was at that point in time. Fish was, a, was the main stay in that area. And so if it took three boats, that's a lot of fish. Simon Peter, as he's on his knees, I can't even imagine to be in the boat with Jesus. To actually, to just to be in the boat with Jesus, face to face, sitting there in the sun or whatever it was that was coming down upon on it, and to listen to that voice as he began to teach. And then, when he saw it, I believe tonight there's some people that's looking to see it. I, and we find that at this, I'm glad because I begin to read a little further. Aren't you glad that that's not the end of the story for old Peter? Amen. And it says, For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draw of fishes in which had been taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Man, you a loser. Get out of here. Simon, you're nothing but trash. Get out of here. Simon, you'll never amount to nothing. You might as well stay here and fish the rest of your life out of this old boat because that's all you'll ever be. Is that what he told him? No, that's not what he told him. Aren't you glad that Jesus takes us just as we are? Aren't you glad that Jesus does the cleaning up that when we see it, and we understand it and we fall to our knees and, and that's basically realizing who we are and who he is and that he's the only savior that's, uh, that can save us, that he's the only one. And so we find that at this point in time that Jesus doesn't say, depart from me. He, he does something that the world would say, you're crazy. What are you thinking? What are you going to do with some old fishermen? What, what can they do? I've had that said to me, you might as well quit and go home. But it ain't about them. It's about one man, Jesus Christ. And the Lord, the Lord as Simon Peter is standing right there, I'm sure there's just such an amazement at this point in time. And, and he tells him, he tells him, he says these words, he says, fear not. We don't need to fear. When we're telling folks about Jesus, we ought not be in fear. Amen, Amen ought to go strong right there. I'm going to tell you, it ought to, be, it ought to be when we stand up and we start talking about Jesus Christ and what he's done in our lives and we start witnessing to somebody and we start sharing about Jesus Christ, we ought to fear not. Because we're not talking about ourselves. We're talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hey, it's time that we start bragging on Jesus. It's time that we get a little bit fired up about it. You know, for years and years, uh, you know, the ball games on Friday night, I don't know, is there a football team around here, a high school football team and football games on Friday nights? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is. And I guarantee you, that it, it can be freezing cold and sleet on the bleachers, and you'll be up there stomping your foot and a ripping and a romping about them chasing a, a hog skin up and down a, a football field. I've been there. I've done it. I've followed the band around. I've done all of that. My son-in-law played football. He played college ball a little bit. And I've sat up there freezing, stinking cold and sat up there, and I'm thinking, what in the world am I doing here? And then all of a sudden, when we get a little bit, fired up about Jesus Christ, uh, we, we want to calm back down. We ought to fear not. We need to fear not because Jesus is telling these old fishermen what's fixing to happen and they don't have a clue about 
what's fixing to go on. Can I tell you that you and I, we don't, we're not promised tomorrow to right now is the time that we have. And he says these words. From henceforth, thou shalt catch men. Thou shalt catch men. I bet they thought, my Lord, what are you talking about? I can't sit out there in a boat and teach like you did. I don't, I don't know how to catch men. All I know how to do is throw this net. I know, I know what the signs of the sky, what the, what the sky looks like, and, you know, that if there's a storm coming, you know, and, and the seasons and this and that, and all of a sudden, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that they have realized who this man is, all of a sudden says, from this moment, you're going to be fishermen and catch men? If somebody was to walk in and tell you that from this point on, you're going to be a professor in a college and you're going to teach aerodynamics, we would look and go, what? I can't even spell aerodynamics. But that's when Jesus looks upon us, look here, he was looking at the heart. He wasn't looking at the outside. He's looking at your heart tonight, church. That's what he's doing. He's looking inside of you, and he's looking because he wants to make fishermen out of us. Simon Peter saw it, and he realized that the Son of God had called him into a boat. And the latter part of verse 11, and it says, And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. All, A-L-L, -L, a small word, but a lot of power in that word. My friend, you can't be halfway for Jesus. Halfway is lost. That's it. It's all the way. It's all the way. He, they forsook it all and followed Jesus. That means they picked up every, walked away and just began serving and going wherever he went. They were there. Simon Peter saw it. Have you ever saw it? Have you ever got to your place as Sister Christie realized in her life? Brother Josh realized in his life, Sister LaDonna realized in her life, Sister Linda, and others that are in here. I'm still learning names. I'll get them all here before we get out of here. They saw it. Have you ever saw it? If you got to that place in your life where you know that you know that you know that there's no doubt in there was no doubt with Simon Peter who he was in the boat with. I want to get. I want, I want to stay in the boat with Jesus. Amen. I'm not going to climb out and do it my way. I'm going to stay in the boat with Him. So tonight I ask you the question. By the way, this morning it kind of went this way. Just like that, I fell over those. I was sitting right here. Sister Linda was sitting right there. And I looked at her. I dead eyed her because it's very important, church. It's very important. This ain't no game. This ain't no hopes. This is eternity. You can play with it. You can throw it around and you, you can guess at it. But my friend, this ain't a guessing game. And I looked at her and I said, Sister Linda, if you were to die right now, where would you go? And it was this long pause. Well, I said, that's way too long. Way too long. My friend, it's a no-so. It ain't what church you attend. It ain't what your last name is. It ain't what your first name is. It's that you know. 
Simon Peter knew who he was in the boat with. There was no doubt. I ask you tonight. I ask you tonight, would, would you search your heart? As Brother Brandon said at the very beginning, this is a scary thing. When you see how many church people get saved. It's a scary thing. When you stop and you think about just, just right here, just what's happened this week. It's a scary thing because when, when, when we allow people, and, we, and when I say allow, it's not that we're picking and choosing, but we allow people to go through life to go through life lost thinking they're all right because they got wed in a baptistry. I've seen it a lot. But I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like it, is it, Brother Brandon? Nothing like when Sister Tiny over there. She, she about to have a fit a while ago. I've seen her over there. Guys, <laughs> I'm telling you. There's something that's inside. When you got him, it's going to come out. Yes. Ain't no hiding it under a bushel basket. I've been around those folks when you ask them, say, you know Jesus, and if you were to die, where would you go? Don't ask me that question. I attend First Baptist Church. Yeah. Well, so what? No, I can tell you right now, my grandma, she prayed for me, and I know that I'm saved. There, there, there's all sorts of reasons out there. And people will believe these reasons, but my friend, the Word of God says there's only one way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's not a good way. He's the only way. What about you tonight? Would you say, I, I, I think I got it settled, but you put think in front of it? Do you think your car is going to run? Do you think that when you get home, you can't think, you got to know. You've got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, as the old preachers used to say. It's time that we kind of get back to some old preaching, y'all. It's time that we kind of get back to some old ways. We done got so mesmerized by the new ways that we become clouded and, 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 we're, and we're not hearing the truth so many times. I'm going to tell you, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of, of hearing uh, about... Uh, Y'all just come in, and, and, and we're going to play some music and turn the lights down low. Let's don't turn the lights down low. Let's crank the lights up, and let's examine the Word of God and hear what God's got for us. Amen? Uh, I've been in the churches. I've been in them where the smoke machines are going, and the lights are flopping, and, and the band's up a singing. Hello? Uh, it ain't about a band up a singing. It's about singing praises to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's what it's about. And I'm about to have a spell, y'all, because I'm going to tell you right now that it's, it's about Jesus Christ. I'm not against a program, but the program ain't the Word of God, y'all. It was wrote by some man that sat behind a desk that was getting paid to write it, y'all. But when you open up the Word of God and it comes out of your heart and it begins to flow out, you're going to get something from God Almighty instead of some, somebody that's gotten paid to say, hey, the, th this month we're going to study this. Simon Peter, guess what? He was a fisherman, and the Lord spoke to him, and what did he do? He caught some fish. He caught some fish. That's what he did. It's time that we start catching men. Amen? It's time that we reached out. I got to say, Brother Brandon, I'm a little disappointed tonight. I'm not disappointed in anybody that's here. But I really felt like that tonight. We'd have that 60, 70 folks tonight. 
But you know what that says? We just got to work harder. Amen. We got to go throw that net, y'all. We got to go throw that net and let it down for a draw, for a catch. We got to go, instead of putting it up and washing it up and folding it up for the next season, no, season ain't over with yet. We need to go throw it. We need to throw it as far as we can and draw it in and draw those in and, 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 and realize. He said, let down our net. So I ask you, before we go another hour here, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, it's a, Stephen, last night, we got in here and got to talking after the service, was on Facebook and kind of talking about the service, and he said, man, I believe I could have preached all night. And I said, yep, hey, you probably could have. That boy got wound up. Amen. Wasn't even nobody in here this afternoon. I heard him in here preaching. He said, how'd you know? I said, the speaker was on outside. <laughs> Could have been just like that man out there, right? Somebody. Somebody might have been listening to you, brother. Hey, there's a there's a little nursery down here. Who knows? Might I've been out there pulling out some plants or doing something other. The word went out. Amen. 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 The word went out. Oh, 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 Simon Peter saw it, y'all. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Would you bow your heads for just a moment? Sister Christie, could I invite you to come and play me something up here tonight? And... Uh, you know, I'm getting to know a lot of you. You all have become very special to us. This church has become very special to us. And uh, I, want, I want you to know something. We don't take it lightly. This ain't no gimmick to us. It's about, it's about souls, y'all. It's about souls. And I'm concerned about your soul tonight. If you're sitting here inside this building tonight, there are others that are concerned. There are others that prayed. Been praying for these services. Would you do a little self-examination tonight and would you just look inside your heart not your church enrollment, but your heart. And I ask you the question, if you were to die, where would you spend eternity? If there was any hesitation, any doubt about where it might be, I ask you to consider this. If you have doubt there and you stand before the Lord and he looks at you and he says are you one of my children and you're standing before him are you going to pause for just a moment and say I hope I am I think I am Simon knew who he was in the boat with you can know tonight, just as these that have been named, that have been born again this week, I think it's a total of nine of them. You can know tonight. Right there where you're sitting, you can invite him into your heart and into your life. Because there's nothing that you can do. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. It's a gift. And it's been paid in full. And all you have to do is accept it. And he'll start the process from there, just as he did with old Simon Peter. The transformation will begin. So right there where you're sitting right now, at this very moment, is that you? That you've realized that you just never really asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Why not right now?
Me praying won't save you. It's you asking Jesus personally. Yeah, right there. In your heart. Believing what he will do. So why don't you pray with me in faith? I'll be honored to lead you in that prayer. But it's you that's got to ask him. Just pray right now. Jesus can hear a whisper all the way to heaven. Just pray, dear Lord Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. And Lord Jesus, I believe you died and you rose again. And right now you are in heaven. Lord, I'm lost. Would you come into my heart and life? Forgive me of my sins. Lord, save me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. And while you got your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a moment, if you prayed that prayer in faith, right there where you're sitting, and you ask the Lord into your heart and into your life, would you slip your hand up? I want to pray for you right now. Thank you. Now, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you if you slipped your hand up, I'd, I'd invite you to meet me in this altar. I want to pray. I want to pray together with you. I want to rejoice with you at what God's done. Just come on right now. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you just come on. I want to meet you right here, and I'll pray with you. It's the greatest decision you ever made. Without a doubt, it's the greatest decision. So you just come on right now. You just come. Nothing to be ashamed of. Man, we're going to rejoice. Might even be a little shouting going on. So I ask you right now, while folks are still praying, I need some prayer warriors to get in the altar and begin to pray right now. Would you make your way and begin to pray? Right now. You just begin to pray. Seek the face of God right now. could not understand why Jesus said you must be born right now. again and what about you I myself what about say you do you know where you'll spend eternity confused. there's still time what about you would you say brother David there's some things in my life that I know that that I just need some help with. I need God to show me and I need to make some changes in my life. Would you say that's you while folks are still praying? Would you slip your hand up? I want to pray for you as well. Just some things not just quite right. Whatever it is. Simon Peter saw it. And when he saw it, he fell to his knees and he said, Oh Lord, flee from me. I'm a sinful man. But Jesus, he had plans. He has plans for you tonight. He has plans. You surrender tonight. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence.
here tonight. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Would you all stand? Let's sing that together. Sing that chorus. I surrender all. I surrender. that you have surrendered all tonight there's still time as the Holy Spirit is drawing you there's still time and I want you to know that this is this church right here loves you and I lift you up in prayer and carry you through whatever it is Whatever the need is tonight, would you surrender? Just surrender, Brother Brand. Um, I had gotten a message, a young lady, they had to take her brother to the hospital. God knows the person and God knows the need, but uh, be in prayer for the young lady. And um, I do want to for coming tonight. How many of y'all are glad y'all came tonight? Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 God's not finished. I don't like to say, and it's not over till the fat lady sings. I don't like that, but I will say this, it's not over till the trumpet sounds. That's right. Amen. Amen. Amen? Has the trumpet sounded yet? No. Then it's not over. We better be casting some nets. This area, one thing I've learned about this area, people like to fight. And I've learned that if people ain't got nothing to fight about, they'll find something to fight about. But there's one thing I learned about that, that if that attitude gets saved, this, this bunch of people fight for Jesus. And the devil knows that, that if this area ever sees revival, then a great giant has been awakened. I'm serious. You chew on that just a little bit. We are what they used to call no man's land. Thieves, thugs, and whatever else. But let me tell you something. The devil knows that if revival ever hits this group of people, then it'll turn this nation and turn this world upside down. Amen. Am I not right? Amen. And I believe that the Lord is given a good start right here this week. Yes. Um, I need a water hose tomorrow, 9 o'clock. I'd like to try to shine up that sign. So I don't know what all we're going to do in the morning. I know we're going to be praying tomorrow at 9. But uh, if you can be here at 9, be here for prayer, we'll do something, okay? <laughs> Brother Josh? I probably won't be able to read y'all again, but I got to go back down to Jackson Park Church. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the last place that you needed a break. And like, no, I don't need a break. This is my break. Amen. Is working for Jesus. Where did in the Bible did God tell his people to take off? He didn't. He said, go run. Run the race. I'm excited. Preachers are probably the only people that can get beat down next to death and get right back up and ask for more. Are we that crazy, brother? <laughs> but I thank God for it because it's a calling. I'm refreshed. I'm renewed. I'm ready to shake the, tent, the area of McNary, Glenmora, Forest Hill, Alexandria, Oakdale. Amen? I serve a risen Savior that's got the hammer of the Holy Ghost, and He'll hammer the heart, and He'll draw that hard heart to Him. Amen? Are you all up for a challenge, Anchor? Come on. I said, are you up for a challenge, Anchor? Let's turn this area upside down. I'm going to ask that Brother Bruce close tonight. You're going to have to quit sitting there because I have a tendency to look that way and you're the first person I see and you're the first one I'm calling on. <laughs> Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Be here at 9 o'clock in the morning for prayer. 7 o'clock tomorrow night. I want to challenge you to bring somebody. Amen. You see, and if anybody sees that guy walking the highway, before I do, tell him, Brother the pastor said, come on in, all right? I missed him. I missed him. I think you missed him. The next person better hogtie him and drag him in. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's passed by here a couple of times, and I've, every time I see him, he's already down the road. Is he back about? No, he's walking. So let's get him here. We got Bye. A, Sir? A special guest going to be here tonight.